Hi, this is Dr. Corinne Wickens. And in this PowerPoint, we're going to focus on Nell Noddings, one of the most widely feminist, widely known feminist philosophers of education. Born in 1929, Dr. Noddings is one of the oldest of the silent generation, and which includes, um, spans 1928 to 1945. Coming of age during the Cold War and as the United States entered the Korean War based upon its foreign policies of communist containment. She is, was the Lee L. Jacks Professor of Education Emerita at Stanford University. And she is best known for a revolutionary feminist text, Caring, originally published in 1984, um, updated edition in, 19, in 2013. Before moving on and explaining a little more in depth about Nodding's conceptualizations of ethics of care, it is helpful to situate her work alongside of another preeminent feminist of the time in um, moral education, that of Carol Gilligan. Both scholars presented the concepts of an ethics of care as another way of being relating to others of decision making and moral reasoning. Rather than a system of moral judgment based in analytic reasoning, rules, and laws, both scholars assert a relational basis for decision making. How might my impact, my actions, excuse me, impact others? So now Nodding's particularly focused in on educational spaces and issues of um, systems of rewards and punishments, whereas Killigan, who wrote in Different Voice in 1982, disputed Kohlberg um, findings of moral development. Many of you may be, are probably familiar with Kohlberg's um, moral uh, attributes. And because he only studied, you know, his studies only involved white male participants. So women's perspectives were not, were considered not deficient, or considered deficient, but they weren't deficient, they were just not captured. So then, but both of them highlight this relational components that impact how women are considered to think and um, perceive their actions in relationship to others. Like Maxine Green, albeit just a little younger, Noddings and Gilligan are also second wave feminists, challenging historical patriarchal systems. They rightfully documented how moral reasoning and educational systems both were predicated upon purportedly masculine ways of being and negotiating the world. So this brings us though to the uh, re revert um, back to the idea of essentialism. And so we have the idea here of the moral development of girls tending to be based upon compassion instead of being justice based. This is an essentialist perspective where um, and it's useful to clarify the idea of essentialist ide identities uh, or essentialism, as noted in this illustration. Essentialist perspectives draw upon biological constructions of gender, contending essential differences between men, women and men based upon sex characteristics. Because of women's childbearing capacities, women are presumed in, to be essentially more naturally and innately nurturers and caregivers. Men, because of chem the chemical testosterone, are presumed to be more naturally and inherently stronger and more competitive. So in this image that brings out the original central spirit viewpoints of Gilligan, that girl's morality is based on compassion and empathy rather than orientations towards justice, uh, righteousness, and law. So the, coming back to nodding specifically, the subtitle for Nodding's um, book, Caring, was originally a feminine approach to ethics and moral education. In the updated 2013 edition, she altered feminism, feminine, excuse me, to relational understanding. So then we have a relational ethic, a relational approach to ethics and moral education. So because the understanding that feminine is later is and caring is not intrinsic or essential element of women, but of all people. So this change represents an important adjustment in feminine scholarship that happens, you know, particularly post 19, you know, it's like 1990s and, and into the 2000s. Again, the emphasis here is on the relationship of caring between the carer and the cared for. It is insufficient to, um, for the carer to say, but I really do care if the cared for do not perceive the interactions between them as real caring. 
So this relationship and the perceptions of the cared for is significant. And in that way is similar and likened to com uh, uh, communication theories that communication doesn't happen <laughs> if the receiver does not understand the communication or the intentions. It doesn't matter what the uh, communicate, you know, the original um, communicator says if that is not understood in the same way by the receiver. So I see this a lot with white me female teachers and their students of color. The teachers might say, I care for all my students all equally. But then turn around and say, these children's parents don't care about education. So what are we going to do? Or another circumstance, an ESL teacher, of which I was participant in part of the research related to this situation, taught a class of 95 to 99% of undocumented students. But and then in front of these students, not to them, but to an aside, but in their presence, then complained about undocumented families coming across the border, criticizing nonprofit groups for providing water along the common pathways, coyotes, the ones who to, um, typically guide um, undocumented individuals in their families across. Pathways Coyotes used traveling with undocumented students because it would just encourage undocumented immigration more. So the teacher on the one hand said she cared for her students, but at the same time dismissing their communities, people, folks, just like them, was and had been them. So these students recognized that wasn't caring. So as Nodding emphasizes, the cared for has to recognize the actions and behavior of the carer, in our case, in education, the teacher, as truly caring. So it, you can't have that you know, talk one side, of, you know, the phrase talk one side of the mouth and out the other differently. So that the relationship has to be mutual and has to be understood by both parties as caring. And if both parties don't see it as caring, it isn't caring no matter what the intention is. So then we get um, to highlight some of the three central assumptions that Nodding emphasizes related to this ethics of care. First off, that carer and cared for, these labels, terms, are not permanent, and not even in parent-child relationships. For if the parent and child both live long enough and the relationship has indeed been a caring one, there is likely to come a time when the child, previously the cared for, in turn becomes the carer of the parent as they age. And in education, the care and cared for relationship usually averages a school year, but maybe shorter, maybe a semester, maybe a quarter, or longer, maybe a couple of years. If in coaching situations, it might be a few years. And Similarly, as highlighted with a change from the term of feminine to relational, caring relations are not the purview of women alone. A significant element of the women's movement has been the allowance for men to demonstrate deep caring as well, increased participation among rearing children and some of the household duties. So that relational component, that loving caringness uh, as a, as a as a loving parent has been allowed for and be able to express more readily in the last three decades than in previous generations. So caring is not purview of women alone. And otherwise, the third one is that the caring relationship guards against abuse and exploitation. Just because you care for someone doesn't mean they have the right to exploit you nor do you, is there the expectation that you must suffer abuse and exploitation. So the, because, the, because abuse and exploitation uh, is the antithesis of caring. So that caring relationship, it's part of that's why we as educators are mandatory reporters because caring means paying attention for and looking out for the welfare of our students. So in this quote, Nodding draws an explicit connection between the caring relationships in school and academic achievement. She contends that 
My contention is first, we should want more from our educational efforts than adequate academic achievement. And second, that we will not even achieve that meager success unless our, ch unless our children believe that they themselves are cared for and learn to care for others. So she positions empathy and caring as first and foremost of the educational responsibility. Students won't learn if they are not cared for if they do not believe they are cared for. And we know that the quality of the teacher is singularly, is exceptionally most important. And it is that relationship that creates that you know, significance. So even if a child, a student, young person, does not necessarily like a topic, doesn't like, is usually not interested in a subject matter, if they know the teacher cares for them, they will usually work harder because that teacher does care and they don't want to leave, let that teacher down. And related to social justice education, we need to confront our biases, which are often revealed in the stories we tell in the teacher's lounge, the suggestions that we don't see color because our students are gonna see through it all and they will know whether we are really caring as mentioned with the undocumented students or not. Following up this pre the previous slide, not emphasize that care relationships do not need to be a big C care, if you so to speak, with every student. But when interacting with students, they, the students must be seen. We must be present with them in that moment. So she says, I do not need to establish a deep, a long, a deep long lasting, time consuming re personal relationship with every student. What I must do is to be totally and non-selectively present to the student, to each student, as he, she, they addresses me. The time interval may be brief, but the encounter is whole, total, and that encounter is what stays with the students. As an example, when our now college student was in elementary school, we would occasionally ask him, did your teacher talk to you today? She was often so busy with our, her more challenging students, either the academically or behaviorally, that she might not say anything to our son for the entire six hours in a school day. You know, we, we recognize that some students are gonna consume our attention and our energies and resources so much more than others. But that me doesn't mean that we don't pay attention to them at all at others at all. And so then you, the idea of talking to, you know, rec recognition that you matter, you are here and I matter to you and you matter to me, you matter in this space is critical. So I conclude with a quote from Thich Nhat Hanh. So obviously not from Nottings herself, it seemed appropriate to follow up her comments with a saying from Thich Nhat Hanh. Who, argue, who asserts, nothing is more precious than being present in the moment, fully alive, fully aware. When we do that for our students, Dr. Noddings reminds us, when we are present for and with our students, our students can and will do amazing things. And I under, don't underestimate the challenge of that. We are exhausted so much of the time that our lives and energies are drained continually from the pressures that are placed upon us. So being present seems like a dream, a goal, you know, following the rainbow, you know, that is impossibility. But if we can find ways, moments to be present, to put aside the pressure, to put aside the administrative you know, and the minutia of grading, of dealing with technology, and just being here with them in the struggle, that in the long run is what students will remember. That presence, that caring, that's what they will attain over the long run that will sustain them through their educational careers. <laughs>